five have been in existence a long time, and our purpose is to foster economic development in and around the city of Haiti, and that's what we're here for tonight. Um, we are very excited to participate in, in this meeting about this, what we believe is going to be a really exciting project in the National Lab in the Congress. I am going to introduce the architecture firm that we have hired um, to conduct the mission of work on this. I would also like to recognize uh, Dr. Mahid Mahidi and Chair Mayor. He's, Dr. Mahidi is the director of the Standard and Natural Lab, and Chair Mayor is his second in command, I think. So we're so pleased to have you here tonight and to join us. It means a lot of to see your presence. Um, the meeting tonight is going to be conducted. Uh, by representatives of the architectural firm McMillan, Pasden, and Smith. I call them MPS, which is hard for me to pronounce all of them. There are three representatives uh, from MPS here tonight um, KJ Jacobs, uh, Tate Sanders, and Barbara Price are going to conduct the meeting. I'd like to you know that they have not been retained to do architectural drawings and renderings, so if you came here tonight to see what this facility is going to look like, you're going to be disappointed. We, we have nothing to show you. They are, they've been retained to do the, the, the focus meetings like this, to talk to representatives of the labs and the other potential users of the, of the property, and just to kind of get the process started. And that's what they're going to talk about tonight. So with that, I will turn it over to Ken. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for taking time out of your lives to come visit. Um, we look forward to hearing what everybody um, came to talk about tonight. J just a couple of things real quick. Once again, my name is KJ Jacobs. I'm one of the architects at McMillan, Paz and Smith. Sanders Tate on the left. Uh, Sanders is um, tonight. He's going to be making some notes as we talk. Um, just so that we can make sure that we capture everyone's comments, um, hopes, goals, and concerns. And then uh, Barbara Price, whom y'all, some of y'all may know or recognize. Um, Barbara was also involved in the Aiken County Public Library project that we recently finished. Um, and y'all may know her socially as well, some of you. Uh, Barbara's gonna be the microphone passer. Um, if if y'all don't mind, rather than have everyone who wants to talk come up to the mic, um, like we're at a council or a design review board meeting, we'd really like for this to be a little more informal than that. We'd like to give everyone the opportunity to say something. Um, that does not mean that you have to say something, but we would love for everyone to have the opportunity to say something. You are all here for a reason. You didn't just drive by and see, see uh, news crews and decide to come in. So you're here for a reason. It's very important to us that we hear what y'all have to say. I am going to ask, though, um, you have to start, we have one rule, you have to start by telling me one thing that you love about Aiken before you tell me why, you've been, why you're here and what some of your concerns are. Uh, we're not going to time things. We'd like to keep this informal. We'd like to give everyone an opportunity. I would ask, please be respectful um, of, of everyone's time. If you've heard a comment before, I'm happy for you to say I agree with that comment. Um, please, we're trained to do this and listen and take good notes. We are listening to each and every one of you. Uh, so please be respectful of everyone's time. We'd like to get out of here at 7.30 like we promised everyone. So um, if that sounds good, uh, we'll start in just a minute. I'm going to say a few things. We came here to listen, but I am going to say a few things. Um, the first is, um, Buzz mentioned, we have not been retained to design a building. We have not been retained to design a building. We've not yet designed a building. We've done almost nothing so far, okay? What we're here to do, what we've been hired to do, is to do what amounts to a feasibility study to understand all of the opportunities and constraints around the Savannah River National Lab's desire to build a new building downtown, okay? There's a lot of moving parts. A lot of y'all are already aware of some of the opportunities, some of the constraints. We're here tonight and in this process to understand what all of those things are. And then at the end of that, we're going to start putting it together. Okay? So haven't designed a building yet. Um, just here to listen and start to understand what all the needs and opportunities are. There are a couple other folks that are not here that are on our team. Uh, we have a preservation architect by the name of Glenn Keyes who lives and works in downtown Charleston. Uh, Glenn is going to help us make sure that we understand the historic architectural significance 
of some of the buildings around where we're talking about working. There's cultural sensitivity as well. Glenn's focus is going to be on the architectural sensitivity. We've also got a structural engineer by the name of Craig Bennett. Craig's also out of downtown Charleston, and Craig eats, sleeps, and breathes the renovation and restoration of historic buildings. So if we need him uh, in any of the preservation work moving forward, uh, he'll be a resource. What we want is to have those folks on our team to make sure that we understand what buildings are in place, what is the significance of them, so that when we then go to put things together, I've read a few things where it sounds like all the puzzle pieces have already, this person's moving here, this building's getting torn down. Y'all, none of that's been decided, okay? Someone may have said that, but it's really people just starting to talk and think about what, what might happen. Nothing is going to be decided until we get to the end of this process and are able to put, put these things together and find out what makes the most sense for the city of Aiken, the citizens of Aiken, the constituents, all the stakeholders, and the folks at the lab that are the reason we're here in the first place. Is that fair, clear? Yeah. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. I have one question. Okay. You're, you're talking about the structures downtown. Yes, ma'am. Has the decision been made that we must do this downtown? I will talk about that. Thank you for asking that question. It's actually the next thing I'm going to talk about. Any other point of order questions? So uh, this graphic looks similar if anyone was at the State of the City announcement. Um, try to stand out of the way, sorry. Um, if anyone was at the State of the City or saw any of the press coverage afterwards, this graphic looks um, a lot like that is sort of the basis of it. What we've highlighted, we're calling it an area of study. We want to be very careful with our words and where we draw lines. You know, we understand there's a lot of sensitivity around, you know, if you draw that line in the road, does that mean that we're going to do something to the road? All, all that we mean by this graphic is that this is the area in downtown Aiken that we're going to be looking at, okay? We're going to be looking at and understanding the buildings. Newberry Hall is in here. Newberry Hall is not going to be torn down. Okay, we're going to work with those folks to try to leverage Newberry Hall as an asset and make sure they're getting what they want, uh, but, but none of that's been decided. Um, the, the, the important thing, and to your question, um, when, when the grants for the National Laboratory became available and when the National Lab folks began looking in Aiken and this project started to come to fruition, they, they had some key things that they wanted to accomplish. One of the missions of this project for them is engagement in the community, workforce development, and helping to develop a pipeline of talent and resources to work on the national work with the National Laboratory. So they were very interested in a site with a high degree of visibility. There's an expression in real estate, Maine and Maine, which means in any town in downtown Charlotte, it's trade and try on. Okay. They wanted to be at sort of the main and main location in Aiken, ideally, ideally, so that they could have maximum visibility. They want to be a part of the community. They want their folks to be able to leverage walking downtown easily and being able to go eat in restaurants. I hope that the merchants are supportive of the idea that there will be more folks downtown. They're really interested in trying to um, continue to build on the energy and the success of downtown Aiken. Um, in, in that location. So walk, walkability was important and, and their interest in having access to amenities in downtown and supporting those amenities and supporting the merchants in downtown has been important to them since the day that I met them, which was not very long ago. So the other, the other part of that is the Amentum Theater and the, ideally having close proximity to that so that there isn't a need, there's some, there's intended to be some uh, sort of exhibit or gathering space within this building, but there's no need to go recreate, I don't know how many seats the Amendment Theater has. There's no need for us to go across the street or even across town, quite frankly, and create another theater that has the same capacity as the Amendment Theater. So we want to try to leverage that relationship um, to have access to that as, as an amenity. So just like Newberry Hall, there's no point in going and creating a bunch of catering facilities if you have the opportunity to leverage existing relationships next door. So those were kind of the framework um, around the decision to focus on this site. As you all know, 
the city of Aiken controls this site. So putting that criteria together with this site has led us to this conversation. Did you look at other sites? Sir? Did you look at other sites? Um, I, under, I have not looked at other sites. I understand that there are other sites that have been discussed and considered in the past, and those do not meet the criteria that the, the, well, uh, the lab has. Okay, I'm going to put this out. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but I appreciate the question that the lady said up front. Uh, there's a parking or a parking lot available from the center across the street from St. John's. I don't know what the size of that is, <coughs> but 40,000 square feet on three floors, you could accommodate 150 by 100 feet. Uh, that's two blocks away from the amount of theater, I think. Uh, so there, there may be another site. I'm just wondering why are we focusing automatically on here? Okay. I, I think that's a very fair concern. I think it's a good question I, for the city to answer. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and also, you know, we're focusing a lot on this when in fact everything really started with the hotel why aren't we focusing on where it started that i store there but we're getting ahead of ourselves let me just suggest something if we and this is for the city not for you sir and i sure. apologize i know i'm paying you for your time no, you're not but, while we're here but, Yeah, it's me. So if, if you could, please. I, I understand your concern. We're going to talk. But we'll, you're already focused on this problem. Sir, we've not done anything. Yes, you did. You're focusing on this problem. Well, that's, that's his job. So, so, so we're here to study. It, it might be that this site doesn't work for this project. Well, we could talk about any parcel in downtown. I apologize to you. No, I, but I'm saying this but, to the city. It's neither. I, I think the, the National Laboratory is interested in building a project in downtown Aiken. Okay, okay. And they, last question, they, and I'm going to shut up. My last question. You didn't tell me what you love about Aiken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My last question, uh, and I'll shut uh, I don't know if I forgot the last question. But, uh, um, tell me what you love about Aiken first. I love about Aiken. I love the culture. I love the history. I love the people, especially the people that grew up in Aiken. I didn't grow up in Aiken. I love this place. Um, and I just don't understand why we're going through the same kind of planning process that we're supposed to have. Right, let me ask you this, and this is an appropriate question. Is it, yeah, I've got the last question here. Is there a time constraint on the Savannah River National Lab <coughs> decision? 
Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. No, maybe does. Is there a timeline? Well, I tell you what. We'll, we'll, that's important. Sure. We'll, and we'll write it down and we'll talk about it. Sure. For a long time. Okay. And they've been in line to try to get something done. Okay. So if there's a time constraint, I understand why we're talking about it. If there's not a time constraint, let's put the hotel up front. All right, I'm, I'm going to finish a few things I wanted to say, if you don't mind. Um, there, there were also a, a few things, and, and y'all, I, I don't mean to be condescending. There were a few kind of uh, numbers and square footages of buildings that I've seen just sort of circulating. I, I just, I, we put up a few sizes of a few buildings just for reference. Um, we have not, somebody already tonight said 40,000 square feet. We don't know how big this building is supposed to be, okay? The reason we've been engaged is to start to talk about what the folks from the National Lab need, what the folks from USC Aiken, if they're involved in the project, might need, what the university consortium might need. They've got stakeholders from the National Laboratory that are, that are gonna be working here. We need to talk to them. We don't know how big this building is gonna be, okay? I, I think people have said 35, 40, 45, 50. We have no idea. It may be that it all wants to be on one floor. It may be that it wants to be on two or three floors. It, that speculation is completely premature. The point of us being engaged to do this is to understand everything that the laboratory wants and everything that the other relevant stakeholders want Look at that in the constraints of the budget, the schedule for the project, timeline's a very fair thing, and the physical constraints of the building, the site, and the adjacent buildings. We're gonna help put all that together with y'all's input and the folks that are funding the project. We're gonna work towards a great solution for downtown Aiken, okay? We've not made any of these decisions, okay? The, the, the timeline that we do control is this front-end feasibility study. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of the things. We, we started today looking at some of the existing buildings on that site and trying to understand what's in place today, what we think has architectural and cultural significance. There, there are adjacent tenants. Y'all have seen there, there are folks in and around this site. That would include Newberry Hall understanding what some of their needs and wants are. I've not even met those folks yet, but you know, we certainly don't want to do anything that would constrain them. We want to understand what their goals are, um, as, as well as some of the other tenants that are close by. The, the, the big part of this is understanding what the National Laboratory wants and what their, their other stakeholders, the University Consortium, USC Aiken, and some of these other folks, what they want and need out of this building so that we can start to understand how that might stack up on the site. So we're here listening to early concerns. We're gonna get through that and, and we're gonna have just a very early study report. That report is not gonna have architecture, it's not gonna have renderings, the site won't even, won't even have been decided, okay? All it's gonna do is say, of the buildings that are on site, there are some that are significant, perhaps some that aren't. There's cultural significance that we need to pay attention to. The tenants, tenant A may need 1,000 square feet, they may need 5,000 square feet. There may be a lease in place at this date, there may be a lease in place at that, at that date. So we'll gather and understand all of those constraints and opportunities. And then most importantly, we're gonna program the building so that we do understand how big the building wants to be, okay? We still will not have drawn anything. That, that report will be given to the city, the National Laboratory, and I suspect it'll be made publicly available that document to start to understand what, what we found in that initial assessment and fact-finding review. All the stakeholders, including y'all, will have the opportunity to review what we've written and what we've said and what we've done. And we'll be right back here, if they'll have us again, we'll be right back here to hear after y'all have read the document, after y'all understand what's been done and found and developed up until that date, We'll, we'll come back here and we'll talk about that, okay? That's the second one. We'll then develop a final report for posterity and issue that report. Only after that final report is issued, does any real site planning, whether it's on this site or another site, does any of that start? Then we'll have what is a traditional site planning and blocking and stacking exercise where we start to understand how the program for the building 
might fit onto this site or another site. Once we start that, there will invariably be options, okay? There are needs and wants, there's always a budget, there's always constraints. So we will have some early massing and conceptual options that we'll be back in front of y'all to begin to share and see how folks, what folks think about those things. That's not the end of your process or ours, that's what we've been engaged to do on the front end, okay? So we're gonna develop a feasibility study that says this is how big the building wants to be, and this is what we think the site opportunities and constraints are around it. Does that make sense? Yes. So, if, if we could, please, let, let's start up here. Again, y'all don't have to speak if you don't want to. Happy to hear folks, if you would, please be respectful of time. And you have to start with something you love about Aiken or I'm gonna take the microphone away from you. Could you ask the speaker to introduce himself? Sure, if y'all would, please just say your name. Is that enough name? Please stand because they're- Yeah, if you don't mind, if you're able to. If y'all are able to stand, please do so. I'm not opposed to compelled speech, so I'm sorry to be antagonistic, but I'm not going to say anything I love about it. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't love it. And I was born here and I grew up here. Um, and I wasn't quite prepared to talk yet. I was forming my thoughts. But um, I guess there's a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I guess another saying could be, if it is broke, you need to fix it. And I think the process of Project Pascalis, which had a polluted chain of um, events <coughs> that brought it to the point where it was presented to the public. It, 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 uh, so many, God, I hate you. So many, um, so many of the people that are involved in it have conflicts of interest or potential or appearances of conflicts of interest. You have, you know, this individual who has this and this and this, and they're working for this. And I, I, again, I'm not prepared, but I think anybody who's been watching this knows what I'm trying to say. Um, it's, um, it, the, the word incestuous comes to mind. I, I think it's very serious. I think it's very serious uh, in the conflicts of interest and I, I want to make sure that that's, that I word that as strongly as possible. How, how, would, how would we, in a, in, a, in a town like Aiken, South Carolina, how would we, how could we mitigate we're, we're working on a process that has public transparency. We were not involved in Piscalis. I well, understand the frustrations. I think that, I think that if, if you have somebody who uh, is a, is a, has, works, works for Savannah River Plant, contracted for Savannah River Plant, and they're also involved in the uh, Aiken Municipal Development Corporation, they have roles there. Uh, I mean, hopefully somebody else will follow up behind me because okay. again, I, I didn't yeah. start over I'm not here. trying to put you on the but spot. But also, I, I'd like to say that um, if, if this building were to be downtown on off hours at night on weekends, you've got this huge dead zone. So we have this dead zone there. And, and I, I don't think that's really part of what makes for a vibrant town is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, and hopefully people will build on this, but the, the, you know, what we would like to see is what Aiken has always been in the downtown, which is to have shops and, you know, some offices, but you could have this ginormous, you know, block, this footprint. Savannah River Plant has taken over the old Bibble Library in, in different forms, uh, and then the old post office, and now the Amentum Center. It's just like this really large footprint, and we're a company town, and, and the, all the conflicts of interest that are built into that, which even filters down to the people, because a lot of people won't speak out about things at the plant because, because of the large footprint, which does imply a lot of financial conflicts of interest. Lastly, I'll say the uh, Old Aiken Hospital, I don't know how, uh, how that might suit the needs, but I mean, it, with, with all of these millions of dollars, I would think that, um, and, and the federal government is good at, at, at you know, historic reservation, historic restoration and preservation. Um, I, I would like to see that area looked at because um, I know it, it, it seems kind of silly to be talking about these people wanting to, you know, have lunch downtown. A lot of people would like to have lunch downtown, but 
with the, the, the downtown is being consumed by Savannah Riverside. Okay. I, you know, the original idea was to have this out of the college. I'm not sure why that okay. decided why was so Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all, yeah, y'all, I'm, I'm not trying to put people on the spot. I just want to try to do this in order. I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity. So, are we just keep walking? <laughs> you don't have to. Hi, I'm Carol Powell. I moved here eight years ago. This was my 19th move around the country. My background is in architect and also in building and math. And particularly, I felt in communities with restoration. My daughter lives in Boot Bay Harbor, Maine, in a house that's 375 years old. So I've seen my fair share of restorations, and that, that can't happen in a community. Uh, if that's the answer, fine. But I do appreciate how you are starting at this point to talk with everyone so we all can get a little feedback and that this will make it one way or the other work. I just hope we can all keep our cool and get something done. Thank you. For Thanks. Your time. Thanks. Hi, my name is Bob Sharden. I'm uh, Seven year resident of Aiken. I love this town. It's all that I was hoping to find when I um, left down on the coast. I lived in, in the Buford area for six, almost 15 years. And this, is, this has culture, it has history, it has everything that I was looking for in the quality of life. And I'm really scared that we're going to lose them. I won't put that right on Now, I think one of the issues that I am most troubled by is the fact that. Our city council, our city leaders, have not done, to my knowledge, a comprehensive plan for development downtown. It's a huge elephant in the room, and it's something that is vitally missing because none of us has had an opportunity to advance our thoughts on what it should look like. That said, how did it, how did the labs decide for downtown? That's a mystery to me. I thought they were going to be citing this at the University of South Carolina campus. And how that fell apart, I don't know. Um, has the National Lab looked, seriously looked at existing properties, which are mammoth and available, like the Hydrogen Technology Research Lab, properties on Gateway Drive, the Regas building on Trail Drive and Aiken. Trail Drive and Aiken. Why hasn't the city and the national labs considered very seriously the old Aiken Hospital site? That's that's a logical use for that property. It can be bought for virtually nothing. It's got lots of square feet. It's close to town. It's got everything going for it, and yet it sits there as if you know it wasn't even under consideration. I guess one of the problems all of us are, are having is that we see on, on the news our mayor announcing the fact that this agreement has been struck with the National Laboratory as a fait accompli. And that bothers me a lot because that comes as a, oh, by the way, kind of information. And I'm not party to that, and I don't want to be party to that. I want to be on the front end, not the back end. Um, I guess one of the last pieces of information that I'd like to add is, does the Department of Energy buy into the, these laboratory uh, facilities being cited in downtown Aiken? I kind of wonder, you know? Um, that doesn't seem, seem to be within the purview of the DOE and of the National Labs. Um, there's lots of places that can be cited. It could bring a lot of economic benefit to the city of Aiken, which is, I think, what the mayor is looking for. But it doesn't have to be downtown. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Linda Keener, and I moved here uh, 2002 and bought a house here in 1993. And I love the area. I came from the D.C. area, which was very congested, lots of traffic. Um, so I like the small town um, atmosphere, and I'd like to see us keep that with our historical uh, buildings, etc. Now, I 
am tired of shopping away from the city. I would like to be able to shop downtown. I would like to be able to eat more downtown. I don't want to walk by a building that's going to be probably uh, closed up most of the weekends because nobody's working, or they've decided to stop, you know, which the government, I work for the government, so I know how we operate, and we have great ideas to start something, and then we decide to put it on, on the wayside, and all of a sudden we have another building empty. Yeah. And we see a lot of those around here. So I would like to see us get more interested in this little diagram you have here as something that benefits the entire city. Um, I think the hospital that we've got out by USC, we have that huge facility, which I'm not even sure what they do, and I went to a horse show out there once, and I see they have some wedding um, um, events out there occasionally. But what is that building doing sitting there? That's right by the college. Uh, it's easy to get to from from out of the site also, and that seems like a nice uh, open facility that's available. Um, but I think that there's at least two, and then there's uh, out of the site, which everybody's mentioned, um, available spaces. Why are we crowding another governmental agency downtown? And that's my thought. Thanks. My name is Bob Lynette. I, if you were involved in the library renovation, I think that was a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, two comments, really. Uh, one, agreeing with the gentleman back here, uh, the major problem in Aiken is the Aiken Hotel. And I think everything else should be put on the back burner until that problem is solved. Uh, secondly, uh, with all due respect to the managers of the, of the uh, Savannah River Lab, uh, we've seen a lot of projects that have start, been started in the lab. Money has been spent, uh, project has been discontinued. Uh, just recently, of course, the Mox project with billions of dollars put into it. Uh, project was canceled empty building sitting there. I would hate to see a facility built in downtown Aiken and then a subsequent manager of the lab coming in and decided he wanted to do the training on site rather than downtown Aiken and we're sitting here with an empty building. So, thank you. My name is Willie Allen. Finney. I am a product of this community. Um, I am here because I am interested in how the changes that are being proposed will affect me. I thought it interesting, well, ironic that here we are in this building, um, the Center for African American Cultural History and uh, all the contributions that we're in. We're in the most barren room, not reflecting <laughs> at, at the, uh, at the uh, forefront of uh, this month. But all that said is I also noted, you know, when you were explaining how you were going to proceed, that the interest of the, the science company coming in was prevalent, the interest of the partners at USC were most prevalent, and you mentioned one other whose interest you are here to uh, express, and you stopped short of the interest of the community. Ma'am, that's why we're here. Right. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm here, sir. Thank you. Y'all don't have to talk. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Joe McGee, and uh, I am a native of Aiken. I was born here years and years ago. Uh, my concern and interest in being here is that my grandfather built the building near where you're talking about putting this other building in the Johnson McGee building. It appears to me, even though I haven't seen any drawings, I don't have any, it just doesn't fit in that environment. <coughs> it, uh, to me, Aiken's a small town, and that seems to me like almost like what we saw when they originally proposed the, the hotel. 
It just doesn't fit into our downtown age. Hi, my name is Ken. I've been down here for seven years. Been coming down here since the late 80s. And what I love about Aiken is it's not New York. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. here. <laughs> that said, um, you know, I'm sure most of us are here because of what happened with the Scalas project, and that was being literally crammed down our throats. And we don't want to see that. We want to see, which you seem to be very open to hearing us, we want to have something that's going to fit in with the channel. And you know, there's a couple of things that could be good about this. Um, my <laughs> um, you know, we know why the city wants to focus on that property. So I'm going to be that guy because the city fought a whole bunch of those properties. Now they're stuck with that until somebody comes in like September and, and takes them off their hands. Um, one of the things that we do have a problem with is the parking downtown. Okay. Potential parking structures here. Um, if this goes forward and something's put down there, that employee park, employees would be required to park in those parking structures, leaving our downtown open for those people who do want to come in and who shop and everything else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Martha Lockhart. Uh, I moved here in 1960, left in 1967, <laughs> always wanted to come back and finally was successful in doing that in 2011. I've always loved Aiken and I've been coming back here on a regular basis really since about 1978. So, I like the small town. I like the fact that it's a very diverse town. We have people here from everywhere. I, I like the fact that we have a lot of different opinions. I, I really appreciate what you're doing, asking us what we think. I appreciate the very thoughtful and methodical approach that you're taking. However you end up, I think it's going to end up being good. You may end up that you don't like anything down here. You, you know, hard to say. But I'm very appreciative of your approach and wish you well in getting to wherever you end up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My name is Marguerite Dorger. I've been here since 2010. I love the small town charm and the horses. Now, my idea is a little different. And I'm, I appreciate where you are in this project on the, um, the, the National Lab building. And listening to you and seeing the pictures of everything, and yes, we have to do something with the hotel, I'm thinking that they're going to fix up the hotel, they're going to make a hotel, but it's not going to be the monster that they were talking about before. And we all feel a sting from that process. So. If you have a hotel, an office building, I'm not finished with the office building, you have the Amentum complex, you have a symbiotic relationship with this whole block where you have a theater, you have a catering company with uh, Newberry Hall that could serve the office business, you have a hotel that could serve the office business, and if, if National Labs is interested, Perhaps they take the top two or three floors, and the bottom floor is all shops. So we get your stores. And, and I, I don't know, somehow pull it together so it appeals to all of these needs. That's my thought. Thank you. Um, just, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mention, I mean, I alluded to some of the retail folks. I mean, I think the, Again, we, we've not even started programming with the laboratory. Part of, part of what they want to do is, is make sure that there is engagement, not just with the university consortium faculty and students coming through, but also with the public as well. They've talked about perhaps some type of, you know, 
I'm not going to use the word museum because that starts to sound like something entirely different, but you know, there may be some way to tell the National Laboratory story um, that, that, would be invite, that would invite the public in to that space. I mean, I think the, a portion of the program that they've talked about with this kind of um, space where students and faculty can exchange ideas, research ideas with um, lab employees, um, they imagine as being a very public space and, and being different from you know, their sort of internal functions that would be elevated. It would certainly be our goal in any building we would build in downtown Aiken that it's walkable, pedestrian friendly, it, you know, engages the public. I mean, those are really kind of givens to us. So thank you for saying that. I didn't bring it up before, but we agree wholeheartedly that we won't, uh, obviously want this building to engage the public in improve the streetscape, not do harm to it. Uh, Linda Johnson, um, I've lived here since 2009, and what I love about Aiken is all the history that I get to research and listen. Um, I'm not opposed to SRNL being somewhere downtown. Uh, I think that it's been shown time again that cities thrive when they have a combination of retail and restaurants and some office professionals. You need that synergy there. But I would ask three things, two of them for the city. First, I think it's really important for the city to very near term develop a comprehensive plan for the core of downtown. You've kind of heard people talking about that a little bit. I know there's a big comprehensive plan effort going on right now, but that's for the whole city. But I think for the downtown, something near term needs to be done. Second, I think the city and the lab need to collaborate on looking at what were all the possible areas that are within walkability of downtown that meet the criteria but look at multiple sites and be able to say why are they going to narrow in on maybe this one site they need to document that and then you already took one of my things you can have um, offices on the second and third floor and retail and restaurants on the first floor that would be great that's what happens in downtown already where we have our shops on the first floor and maybe condos or offices on the second floor. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> well, my name is Don Monahan. I've lived in Aiken since year 2000. I actually moved here to work for a group to fight the now defunct MOX plant, plutonium fuel plant and decide to stay. That should be enough. It's nice and very end. Okay. I'm pleasantly surprised by the fact that you're not running this meeting like the way City of Aiken routinely runs meetings, which is designed to divide. City of Aiken's guide to hand, handbook for boards, commissions, and committees tells chairman of those boards committees and commissions to start by asking people who are opposed to come up, followed by those who support. They never say, does anybody have any questions? That's not in the guide. That should change. Because that's a reason why there's so much conflict in the city. That and the fact that they, there is withholding of information on a routine basis. And this is one of those examples, unfortunately. This project has been in plans and discussed for two years. So my first question is, is where is the lab representatives tonight to answer questions? <clears throat> Secondly, where will the lab expand if it wants to expand? You're going to all build on a, less than an acre. What happens if they want to expand? Let's say this is a great idea. But if you want to expand, where's the room to expand? As compared to the old hospital site, which is over nine acres, Williamsburg Street site, which would be a perfect place for a lab that specializes in cleanup because they could possibly take some PR uh, credit for operating on a former very contaminated site. Where are the alternatives that have been discussed to date? If the lab is going to be open about this, and quit meeting behind closed doors with the city council, like it has done already twice, and it has done repeatedly with the AMDC. 
since June, January of last year. Where, where are these alternatives? This is Battelle we're talking about. This is not some rinky-dink um, company that's never done this before. They, they are required by contract to, to conduct integrated, thorough approach to everything they do. So where is the analysis from the past year that looks at all the sites? Because this is not just, this is a site that's supposed to be in Aiken County. It's not necessarily supposed to be in the city of Aiken. As I understand it, the other alternatives were North Augusta, county land down by New Wellington, downtown Aiken area, and USC Aiken. And for USC Aiken, there was also the issue of this was supposed to be part of some big innovation district tied in with the Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative. It was all supposed to be together, and that's how it was lobbied originally. And much has changed since then. So there's a lot of questions to answer here. You say you're starting off at this point, but there's two years of starting before you. If you're not going to bring forth those issues, then you're still doing things the same way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Amy Gambrell Nichols. Um, I've lived here since December of 2016. Uh, I moved down here from Washington, D.C. area, where I lived for 13 years in taxes and traffic and commutes kept getting bigger and bigger, and all the trees were going away and everything was being built up. And I thought I was going to um, consider Augusta because being a military retiree, but um, then I found Aiken, and just driving through Aiken for two hours, uh, I decided that's where I wanted to be. The small town, the small town feel, not everything being built up. And um, so a few things that I had been thinking about on this particular project, um, where are all the other opportunities, where there's space, there are so many buildings out there that are vacant and all our land is getting taken away for housing developments and everywhere, just things everywhere. Um, and I know this is about the city, but to me it ties in as far as a plan for both the city and the county. I think we need to have a joint plan that discusses that. And I think there are other areas of the county that need development as well that would benefit potentially from this. Um, so, you know, I again, I also asked myself, what about USC Aiken, where this was supposed to be? Um, and I think of downtown as a place where it's the historic, it's the retail, it's for the people who live here, and it's for the people who are coming here because they're visiting uh, tourists, all those kind of folks who are coming here to see historic Aiken in some place unique, not somewhere where there's a big, huge government building in the middle of it which raises all those other questions everybody else has. Thank you. Thank you.
recent resident of Aiken, moved from Florida. I love Florida. I adore Florida. I moved because politicians and developers ruined Florida. <laughs> so this is my new backyard. Sorry, city council, but you're stopping me. And I like Aiken as it is. And I like downtown as it is. And I think one of my concerns is that private small businesses are getting snuffed out. And for, for a, sounds like a federally contracted government building. And I think we've all, I think you're probably starting to understand the public trust issue that Pascalis has created. And I'm sorry that you have to take a meeting for our elected officials. It's okay. Um, I'm sure you're getting paid well to do it. But, um, <laughs> speaking of that, why apply it at work? Speaking of that, I think maybe what would have been better is a, is a meeting not to ask you what your alternatives are or the lab what their alternatives are, but to ask the city council what their alternatives are. For the Where citizenry would like, because this to me is a total display of tone deafness. <laughs> we have been fighting, some of us tooth and nail, to save downtown from becoming any downtown. We're special, I'm not afraid to say it, um, and we're fighting to keep it special. So I think what you're hearing are those concerns. And, and there are conflicts of interest with Pascalis. I don't think they went away. In fact, I think with adding the lab as a possible tenant, they're adding more. So these are our concerns. Those are my concerns. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Annie Smith. Um, I like Aiken because I have so many friends here. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Anyway, it's a fun place to live, and I've been here since uh, 2011, bought a home, and um, then later on moved here permanently from Houston. I want to commend you on your presentation. I'm sorry I came a little bit late, so I don't know your name. KJ. KJ. Yes, ma'am. Jacobs. Great, thanks. You, did, you had a great presentation. You missed the best part. Yeah. Did you dance? <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I'm sorry about that too. I'd like to have a handout <laughs> or have it linked on the line so that we can see your, your uh, plans again. Uh, and so anyway, that's it. I think you're doing a good job. I appreciate the time run that you've presented and I appreciate your taking the blows of uh, the real and public and uh, keep up good work. We'll look forward to the next part of your plan. Thank you. I'm Lewis Rinaldi, and I'm one of the people who was uh, who put together the lawsuit to stop Project Pascal. Uh, and and it's, it's interesting because you see a lot of the tension that that project brought into this community. And I think you know, people have already spoken about you know the lack of planning. City probably should have been paying more attention to its comprehensive planning process rather than manipulating it to get what they wanted, which is what really was the impression that you get from where it came to before. But I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about a number of things that are important in this. Getting 100 people downtown Aiken doesn't happen easily, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a super valuable thing for a downtown agent to consider because that brings purchasing power into the town. People are suggesting alternative sites. One of the problems that people have documented time and again in small towns, new development tends to occur on the outside where it's easier. They put up a new building, the offices go out there. As soon as the office goes out there, a subway opens next to it, then the car wash, then the this. And what happens when you develop like that is you get urban sprawl, and we have it here. 
The second thing that happens is that urban sprawl takes the purchasing power away from downtown. There's, there's no problem with purchasing power in Aiken. <laughs> the problem is the purchasing power is all on Whiskey Road because that's where the chain stores are. So the merchants downtown have trouble. You talk, is you Barbara? Linda. Linda, sorry. We talked about, you know, the office building being closed on weekends. Half the stores in Aiken are closed on weekends. <laughs> because there's not enough traffic. So when you look at preservation, we look at putting people in buildings because old buildings that don't have people in them can't be preserved. They're gonna get demolished. So you have to make them alive, you have to bring people in. Now, there's an enormous, as I've heard, I actually stood up and said, I think this is a great thing for Aiken and people took my head off. We said, we don't want the lab downtown. So there's a feeling in town that the lab is too federal government, too, you know, too sort of heavy-handed, etc. My personal reaction, I, I'm sorry, I moved here March 1st. So I'm relatively new, but I've kind of taken for 30 plus years. So I'm a new as a resident. You know, the lab is us. I don't know how many employees the lab has, but 13,000 or something now. It's a little more than 11,000, I think. I'm guessing. Thousand. Hmm? The lab has about 1,000. Well, no, the, the, the site. The site. Because people, people equate that. You know, if it has to do with the site, it's kind of lumped together. I'm guessing five or 6,000, maybe 8,000 live in Aiken. That's more than 20% of the city. So the people who are going to be in that office, where do you think they're going to live? They're going to live in Aiken. They're going to be on Aiken. So I think we have to be balanced in how we look at this. We could get another company to come in here and build something on that block that would be terrific and have 100 people. It's not easy to do. I know Bud's been working on it. I know Tim's been working on it. And lots of people have been working on it. It doesn't happen overnight. <coughs> So, you gotta be careful what you ask for. The federal government has very strict environmental and preservation restrictions on them. So, I know as a guy who sued the city, if the federal government puts one step, one foot out of line, I can sue them because they have great statutes to stop them. If they don't tear down a building they shouldn't be tearing down, I know I can stop the federal government. I didn't know I could stop the city of Aiken. Because <laughs> things in South Carolina are sometimes hard to get in a court. I know I can stop the federal government. They're very sensitive about preservation. When I see the name up there, McMillan, Pazden, and Smith, that's a great sign to us. When we were talking to the city, that was one of the names that we suggested the city should be talking to. Len Keys was another one of the names. There are known architects who are sensitive about preservation, sensitive about streetscape. You know, we saw projects coming in here that were pretty faceless. We project Pascal, and that was a lot of the objections. I think if we work with this, I think my calculation is that's about uh, six tenths of an acre, maybe depending on how you look at it, it's a little more, maybe seven tenths of an acre. If you put it on three stories, it'll be 15,000 square feet, which is about a third of an acre. So they're using less than half of the space in there to do this. You can leave the storefronts. You can have retail on the ground floor. You can have other amenities that work with it. You can make it sensitive, and I think it would be synergistic for the hotel. If I'm building a hotel, and I know there are going to be 100 people in a Federal office building next door, I know they're going to have visitors coming to see that building. That makes me want to do that hotel much more. I think we do have to talk about allowing some room if the hotel wants to add some additional rooms to make it more economic, allowing for that to happen. I think the hotel can work with uh, both the amenities here and the uh, Newbury Hall to create facilities if somebody wants to do like a mini little conference or have some kind of public exhibit or you know uh, art fair or whatever people might want to do. You can coordinate all those activities in there. I think
then you can work. So I would be very reluctant if I found out tomorrow, oh shit, you pissed the ladder off, they're going to go work. Put this somewhere in some suburban location, which is perfectly convenient to them. Maybe it's easier to get to. Less problem parking, cheaper because there's empty buildings that they can get. And we lost the opportunity to get this downtown. I would worry about what the next alternative is going to be. Because they're going to come in here and they're going to say, I'm entitled to go 50 feet high, 55 feet. That's the zoning. They might sue us. It shouldn't be more than two or three stories because it's an historic district. But they can sue and win and says the zoning allows 55 feet. I get to do 55 feet. I can do five stories all over the place. So we have to be careful how rough we treat the lab. Because if they go away, you don't know what's coming in. So I think 
if we could have that kind of dialogue, that would be great from my perspective, because I think that would be very different from what happened with Pascalis. And the reason we stopped Pascalis is because it didn't have that kind of dialogue, and it wasn't following the rules. Thank you. I think I said a lot of things. Mr. Jacobs, uh, my previous comments are not about you or your prestigious organization. And uh, Lewis, <laughs> I, I, I have nothing against the lab presence being downtown. I, uh, my objection was, how do we already jump to this point and it's about the planning process? Thank you. Uh, I'm John Thornhill. I uh, identify myself as a refugee of Illinois. I'm probably one of the least informed people here since I don't read much that goes on in the paper. However, what I do like about Aiken, which I discovered during the last couple of years since I've been here, is that the town has been laid out with very good design principles, wide streets, long uh, rectangular blocks, large mediums. It's a very attractive town. And the parking was a necessity. The mediums along Lauren disappeared and made way for parking. These were all good design features that were taken advantage of. What amazed me uh, about the previous project, Pascalis, is that it had gotten so far in the uh, development of plans and so on without first having developed public support for it. And I would commend you for this approach that you're taking this time. I've had quite a bit of experience with land development in Illinois, and I have to say I could never imagine how something could have progressed as far as it did here with Pascalis in the jurisdiction where I uh, had worked before. As to the land use plan for this project, it, it seems that uh, enough people in the city council have been enamored with this uh, federal project, uh, which is seen as a plum. It may be seen as a plum, a very stable occupant of a uh, good portion of the property uh, north of the, the alley. But I think it, it does have a downside, which has probably not been explored very well by the people that are pushing for the federal government to get involved in, in the downtown. As many people have indicated earlier, the hospital site is a, is a much better location. It could be retrofitted for any office use that might be contemplated by the federal government with untold room for expansion, not to mention the parking, the accessibility, and everything else. The infrastructure is already in place for that part of town. Um, as to putting a primarily resident, or a office use in this corner uh, block seems very out of place to me. The only reason many downtown big cities are viable is because of the residential component that feeds into the commercial aspect that's on the street level. And I can see a sizable portion of commercial opportunity being subtracted from the overall development and the overall vitality of that block. So I would not see a completely office use as a uh, very really desirable use for that part of the, the block. Perhaps apartments or condos or something of that sort above the commercial spaces would be more viable. It certainly works in most other bigger cities. So I think there's a lot of planning that needs to be done, but the loss of sales tax revenue needs to be weighed against the benefit from having a, a stable occupant for that part of the block. Once a building of this type is in place, imagine how you're going to retrofit that for the next user should the federal government decide to 
reallocate funds to something else. So it's a big challenge and something to be very much concerned about. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Daniel Osborne. I'm uh, relatively new to eight and four years. Seems new compared to everybody else here. Um, I appreciate your being here. That's not an easy uh, task. Uh, you walk into the hornet's nest and you get stung too many times. I love Aiken because my wife has a horse and she loves Aiken. <laughs> <laughs> Smartest man in the room. <laughs> um, I know we're at the discussion phase, we're not even at the planning phase yet, but I don't understand, and this is really more a question for, for the city council, I guess, why we're so intent on destroying downtown, remaking the part of it. I mean, some of it maybe could be redone, we don't like the apartments, we figure out something to do. But there's going to be construction down there for a couple of years of these projects get started. And then where are people in the park? Then where are people going to go? It's going to be a, a, a real mess. Um, I know it's putting the, the cart before the horse, um, but maybe we ought to see drawings in the next month or so instead of waiting until we get to phase three. And you sound like all of our clients now. Hurry up and draw. <laughs> and wait till you see the crowd that shows up at public meeting number three once they see the drawing. That's right. I don't think they're going to like it. No matter what you guys do, you can put the Taj Mahal on that street and people don't want it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Reynolds, thank you for what you've done on Project Pascalis. I disagree with you immensely on, on your <laughs> comments about the lab and so forth, but I still appreciate what you did for us on Pascalis. <laughs> I don't know how the lab's going to react. I don't, I don't think they're out for retribution if we, you know, don't do something that they want us to do, but um, it just seems to me that we, we've got a downtown, people are relatively content. By a show of hands, if everybody thinks we should deal with the hotel first and then do something else later, raise your hand. That's a pretty good show. I don't know. I think that hotel has sparked uh, something within the city council that they feel they've got to redo the downtown. I, I don't know. I, I disagree, I guess. I think we should focus on the hotel first. Then maybe there's room for some project afterwards. Uh, in the drawings. I think we should have drawings. Some, something, sooner rather than later. Uh, I don't know when the public meeting number three is scheduled for, three months, six months, whatever it is. I think the sooner the better because you're going to get a... It, it, it's just a couple months and the, the reason it takes a few months is because we need to do all of the things that we talked about. It, it wouldn't do justice. We've, we've got six people in my office that could come up with some fantastical design for a building in downtown Aiken that has nothing to do with Aiken, has nothing to do with the lab folks, has nothing to do with any of the concerns that y'all have. We need to sincerely understand what's on the site, what's good and bad, what we want to try to do. Y'all made great comments about retail and the pedestrian experience, but th those things just take time. And what we do is we need to talk to everybody and, and then we put it back together. And even when we put it back together and start to show you, the schedule's not up, but even when we start to show you some of those blocking and stacking and some of those concepts, it's still not fully baked, right? It's just beginning to test with this option. This is a complicated site and a complicated program, and everybody's passion makes it complicated. So it's going to take a little bit of time. There isn't one easy, it would be far easier to go down Whiskey Road and build this building, right? right. But, but if we're going to build on this site, it's going to take a little bit of time to do it well. So appreciate it. And it's dangerous to come up here and say, hey, what do y'all think when we've not done anything, right? So you can't hate it until we draw something. When we draw something, then you're allowed to hate it. But it'll just take a little bit of time, a little bit of time to get through that. Yeah, I envision, I suspect others envision some glass we want to keep working in Aiken. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, I, I think what we're trying to understand, the city obviously controls some of this property. We've, we've put a box around, the city doesn't control everything in that box. 
So what, what we want to do is understand the immediate context around the site, that they, the parcels that the city controls. That doesn't mean we're going to raise every building on those. It doesn't mean we're going to save every building. It doesn't mean that the new building, if it gets built here, covers that whole site. Somebody did some math and sounded reasonably right. Like, it isn't to say that this building is going to fill that site necessarily. So all we're trying to do is understand what, I mean, there is a reality. You do have to control a site to build something on it. So we're, of course, going to focus on the land that the city owns. Um, but we don't know yet exactly what, 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 that, what that's going to look like. Sure. Uh, my name is Dan Hulk Lawyer. I work for the city. I knew you look familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I met JJ before. Uh, one of the things I uh, love about Aiken is what they just did with the entrance to Hitchcock Woods. Uh, I actually am maybe one of the few people <laughs> in the room. I, my, where I live is actually on the map. I live uh, <laughs> in the condos on Lawrence Street, uh, right next to Cork and Cap. Uh, I've been in Aiken for over 20 years. Uh, my parents actually got married at St. Thaddeus and had the wedding reception at the Aiken Hotel. Uh, I go to dinner on the alley three or four nights a week, and I, every time I walk past the Aiken Hotel, I feel sad because it is such a shame that that prime space is not in use. And I was not a fan of, of Piscalis. I did not like what they were proposing as far as how big it was going to be and how it was going to overtake that downtown area that I, I, I love so much. Um, but I think that if we had a building there with 100 or so government employees who, federal jobs, they're good paying, they're going to be spending money in the area, I think that it would be a very positive thing for downtown to have something there. Uh, and while I may have preferred it to be a refurbished Aiken Hotel, I think that if we can get something on that spot, because it's such a, a I mean, you, when you go to downtown Aiken, you see that. Everybody, you know, when you drive around, you see it. And I think if it was uh, developed in the right way, uh, I think that it would be a very positive thing for the community. Uh, but I would uh, also say that, uh, or, or ask, you know, uh, as far as uh, McMillan, uh, Pardon, and Smith, if, if y'all have got some history in Aiken, and if y'all have done some projects here before, and you know, so maybe there's people that you're working with who have an idea of what Aiken is about. Thanks, Dan. I'm Debbie Brown. I lived in Aiken for 14 years. And in the last several months, I've been working with a group of volunteers to try to change things for the better in terms of process. One of the things I'm concerned about is, and that I don't, this, this meeting tonight is evidence of something that needs to change, is that it's one-way communication. It's not a discussion. And we're asking a lot of questions, and, but we're not, we don't have any answers. The same thing happens when we go to city council. There's no discussion. So that's a barrier. So we need to amplify the information in the community and make that a two-way discussion. The city has an app that could be utilized for doing such a thing. At some point, in a project, you'll get to the point of sharing um, or, or wanting to get information from um, various constituents. And surveying can easily be done online, but the city first has to advertise the app because not enough people have it. Um, so the app can be used for getting information from people, but I think it's a real really important, especially at the beginning of a project like this, that we get uh, information two ways, okay? <coughs> One other thing is that I hear lots of information being shared about technicalities and architecture and marketing and that sort of thing. The co one component that's not being addressed is education. 
So when you discuss, uh, not you, but anybody discusses marketing realities or cost of real estate or all that, you're, that would assume that the general public understands what the heck you're talking about, right. and they don't. And they're, it marginalizes people. So there, need, there needs to be visualizations, okay? Not necessarily renderings, visualizations, kind of like this, you know? Um, with numbers, budget, you know, buckets. You know, you put this, this bucket of money, makes sense with this percentage, okay? But you gotta make it visual and you have to educate people. And that needs to be an essential component of, the, of <coughs> moving forward, I think, okay. with real transparency. Sure. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jacob Ellis. My family's been here since the 1800s, so I love Aiken. <laughs> and over the last couple of years, Project Pascalis has run off most of the buildings in that proposed block. I think there's maybe two or three left. Newberry Hall, the Dry Cleanberry, and an Indian restaurant. My question or concern is, I've heard that Newberry, not Newberry Hall, Larnaca's Dry Cleaners will be helped to be moved to the Richland Avenue side of the block if this project goes through and SRNL comes. Newberry Hall is going to be inference the con. But the article in the paper stated that the old gun store might be used. The old gun store is currently the site of the Indian restaurant. So which is it? Are we protecting two out of the three remaining businesses? Or are we protecting all of the remaining businesses? The intention is to work with each of those folks that you talked about to understand where they are today physically and where they want to be as a business we're not going to run anybody out of downtown Aiken. No, nobody's going to condemn or close anybody down. I think it has been said. I've read it too. I didn't say it. I, we don't know for a fact that any of what you just said that you've read is going to happen. Okay. I think that has, those things have been said, but we don't know any of that. What, what we want to do in this process is understand what do the cleaners want? What does Newberry Hall want? What does the restaurant want? And then put it all back together and say, well, what makes the most sense? And there probably isn't going to be just one option. So that's where a little bit more of the two-way communication, I think you've made great points about it being a conversation. Um, so I, we don't know the answer to, to that question yet. But we will obviously have great concern for the existing tenants that are there today. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Nancy Ford, and I grew up here and I've been here forever. Um, I, I, there was someone up here that um, wondered if your presentation could be online. Sure. I couldn't get here for the first part of sure. it, so I would really like to see that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Happy to go. This has been a very informative uh, meeting. You know, I came here uh, in opposition of this, and I still am. Um, but so many things have been brought up as alternatives, and the discussion has been informing, I think, for all of us. I'm just going to touch on a couple things that haven't been mentioned that uh, certainly not in the way that uh, I'm going to talk about that. Um, you know, the council has led us to believe that Aiken can benefit long term from a government uh, relationship. And we all know that Aiken has always been a destination city. I retired here, my name's Mike today, by the way. I retired here 22 years ago. In love with this city. 
I'm not coming to this city for a government facility. That doesn't entice me to come to this city. Uh, most people who relocate here, and we've heard it all, it's because of downtown Aiken and what it is. And we need to, and this has been said, encourage economic activity. And I blame it on the Chamber of Commerce. You've got to bring people in here to fill up the buildings, as an example. But to introduce government officials and partisan groups that potentially could preempt the wishes and wants of our citizens makes absolutely no sense to me. Now the last thing is the elephant in the room, <clears throat> and that's what I was going to call it as well, and I appreciate the gentleman up there saying and you as well, that hotel. You all read the newspapers. The old hotel is really what needs focusing, and with the resources we have. The, 70 years ago, this city lost several billions in people because of the fire. The city has told us, and they've basically condemned that hotel. And here we are, excuse me, focusing on this. We have the monies. We should be focusing on the greatest risk to our citizens and our city. And I'm glad I heard a lot of that because that's exactly where we need to be. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Castle. Uh, I'm an immigrant here uh, 15 years now from Northern Virginia, which if you've heard of Northern Virginia, they have their own uh, share of uh, government buildings. <laughs> uh, I started out as a teacher in Arlington and kept moving further and further away as the government kept encroaching until I ended up down here. <laughs> and since, since we've been here, we've had two daughters that have gotten married here in Aiken. Uh, the first one actually got married here before we moved down. Uh, she has a horse farm here, which is kind of a big thing here in Aiken. And uh, we had a number of friends from Northern Virginia. They came down to the wedding, friends, relatives, who were just totally enamored with the city because of what it was. And I want the integrity of the city to stay the same. I want people to come here because they want to come here. Um, that's why we ended up here. Um, and I think it can be done. I think the hospital site sounds like a perfect solution. It's not that far out of town. It's got the land to expand on, should the government need to. And I've never seen a government building that didn't want to get bigger, or a government program that didn't want to get bigger. Um, just ask the people that live in New Ellington how the government uh, can do that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Allen, and I didn't get your name just to save time. I just want to ditto everything he said. Um, <laughs> so you said that that was one option, we could just agree with someone else. And I do think we need to um, really look at not throwing the baby out with the bathwater and seeing potential in what's being offered. Um, I imagine there's grant money involved in this situation, and sometimes there's um, opportunities there. Um, of course, there's certain requirements that must be met, as you said at the beginning. They wanted a Main Street location, or it has to be. Um, so there's certain non-negotiables, I'm sure. But um, also, I. I struggle greatly when we talk about retail downtown coming in. I don't know about you, but whenever a strip mall is built, I think, what's coming? Another nail salon, another, you know, people don't, young people don't shop 
don't come that much anymore. It's a online environment, and that needs to be part of the consideration with, with what's going to make a downtown vital. You could bring shops down there, but it doesn't mean people are going to shop there, especially young people. Are you doing surveys as a part of your study? I'm curious if you'll be surveying retailers downtown, surveying um, the community, surveying students at the college to see what they might like, what would draw them downtown, um, other than, well, never mind. <laughs> but, um, so are you sure you doing, want that survey? Yeah, what are you doing <laughs> surveys? I think that's a great idea. And I think that having the results of those surveys as part of the plan for us to see as a community would be helpful. Um, and who, um, who's representative in those surveys. Getting surveys to come in sometimes is very challenging. Um, you might want to get those students gift cards if they complete the survey and you get a lot of responses. But anyway, I totally agree with this John said. So one more thing and I'll be quiet. Um, no one's mentioned the educational component of this, which I think is a really great plus. Often you have an opportunity, again, to connect young people with our downtown area and doing that through, I know there's an educational component to this where they really want to try to promote, especially science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which are dying fields in America. Um, we need to promote that as much as we can with our young people and encourage them to go in those areas. Um, so anything that does that, I think it's a plus. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cindy. I'll be real short. I was not here during all the scouting stuff. I was one of the officers. If you can answer my question. <laughs> um, all the signs that are littering the area now that we have moved forward on it, if it's on public property, can you just can a citizen remove it, or does it have to be removed by the facility? And a proper, private property is different. We've had met much company come to it, and it's been sad. What's this post fellow slides all? You know, if we're moving forward, it's obviously. So can we move them if we're citizens? And then like on the walls, there's you know, the signs that they have. I think. I just don't know the county. Sorry. I, I think we've noted that y'all would like to try to move forward from Pascalis, including signage associated with it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So Sorry. Yeah. Can we, as a citizen, remove that? Probably depend on. Okay. I mean, like, like on. I mean, not to be like people put it. Okay. That's just not to cause a problem, but just saying it looks like we're moving forward. Hi, my name is Lucky Brown. I'm just like Aiken. I was am confused about the the role of this meeting, having sat through the whole thing. The the presentation that you gave is so uninformative that I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about the project that I didn't know before, which was nothing. Um, the size of it, I can't believe that you, I, I gather that you've been uh, recently hired, but I find it amazing that you don't have a program from the lab and square footage. I, I'm a fine architect. I find that absolutely astonishing. I don't know why we are here, because there's no information to respond to aside from some very useful feedback from the people of the city. But I don't even really know why I'm talking to you. We are talking to you rather than the city. So I hope that there, when, that there might be some additional informational meetings yes, before you come up with your plans. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So we, we really don't know anything, and that's the biggest compliment that I've ever gotten, that my presentation was completely uninformative. So <laughs> thank you for that. Sadly, that was my goal in this. <laughs> you know, seriously, you know, obviously, Pescalis, what, what happened with that process was very damaging here in town. And I think that the city wanted to make sure that, first and foremost, y'all had an opportunity to speak. I'm going to put up a 
email address that <laughs> doesn't yet work, but will soon. <laughs> um, if if y'all, there's been some um, uh, interested in the conversation about how we can engage people. I mean, there's a pragmatism to who's engaged and how often. I think we would love to find that right balance of engaging people or representative uh, individuals that can then go out and communicate with others. The, the city wants to make sure that y'all are heard from the very beginning of this project. And if we had shown up with renderings and a program and a plan, then everybody would have said, well, y'all didn't ask us one question and y'all went off and designed the building. So thank you for saying that. But really, we did that intentionally, knowing that we were opening ourselves wide up when wide open when um, we haven't yet done anything. So we want to open a dialogue, good discussion, two-way communication with y'all in this process, okay? Can I make one final? Can I everybody else? I'm sorry. Uh, I'll go. Uh, so I'll bring this background. Uh, something that I like about Aiken is how friendly it is to remote workers, um, and especially tech workers. Uh, so I was born in 95, uh, so most of you have been living here longer than I've been alive. Um, and I moved here in 2016 uh, for a job at Savannah River site. Uh, not originally for SR at SRNL, but one time at SRNL before then leaving to go work remote. Um, but I liked Aiken and I stayed here because I liked it, um, even though I could choose to live anywhere in the country. Um, and I have to echo a lot of Lewis's points about how interesting it would be to have an office building downtown and how it could bring in new jobs. And we're not bringing in government officials, we're just employing the citizens of the community and or bringing in new hires to the community that would move to Aiken and live here. Um, and the economic buying power of a day worker uh, can really support restaurants downtown and new restaurants, you know, one of the most difficult businesses to open and stay funded. Uh, it's the Monday to Wednesday, or sorry, the Monday to Friday time that's hard for restaurants to sell, not the weekends. The weekends are always packed in Aiken. Um, but that's why all the deals exist on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Our businesses are closed on Monday, so there's no one downtown. Uh, in the middle of the day. Lunches are super sparse uh, in the downtown area. So having 100 workers uh, in the downtown area could be exceptionally beneficial for a lot of the businesses. And this is great. The community not really mad about Project Pascalis. That's why all of you are here. Um, and they're trying to do it right this time with a general fact-finding mission, a feasibility study, where it's an idea in some people's brains. Um, so like everyone should pat themselves on the back by getting so mad at city and making an uproar that the next time developers came in or the next time a project wanted to get downtown, they started with this fact-finding mission to really uh, uh, sort of get the community's input on it. And I'm sure all of you will be at city council on Monday to yell at them for their side of the agreement. <laughs> um, but I am excited for the prospect and I do like that you are taking the initiative to sort of uh, lay the seeds to make it as amendable with the community as possible. Um, having more workers downtown sounds like a great idea. Having more jobs in the community sounds like a great idea. Um, the only concern uh, that I have is there's an SRL annex in Augusta that I don't think it's used a lot, um, and I would be ashamed. Uh, I know that the, the programming phase hasn't really gotten underway yet, but making sure the funding is available for the, for the workers um, to be in those office spaces uh, so that they don't get underutilized um, would be really important from the SRNL side. And I'm sure that they have an economic reason for building new office space and projects to go there. I don't know that, but I would just hate for this space to be underutilized. Thank you. Thanks. Much um, for downtown Aiken, and 
The other thing that concerns me is, um, um, it doesn't say it here, but I've read that there will be a parking garage component as a part of this development. Um, I'm originally from Stanford, Connecticut, and uh, 40 years ago, I was the president of the city council there when we were in the midst of urban renewal. And our uh, developer convinced us to build a parking garage in downtown um, because they didn't feel that there was enough uh, space available. And so we did. And uh, it made sense on paper. But the unintended consequences were something that nobody expected. And what happened was that the office workers would park there during the day. They would leave. We had been pitched <coughs> the concept that uh, the community would park there at night because they would be going to restaurants and movie theaters. That didn't turn out to be the case because what happened was that when the office workers went out at 5 o'clock, the city's homeless population moved in. And all of a sudden, we had crime and extra police expenses and a lot of uproar, uproar in the community. And uh, uh, it had consequences for a couple of city council members who were defeated in the next, in the next election. So, I think this is something that needs to be thought of sort of beyond the scope of what you've been hired to do. But in the grand scheme of things, this thing has the potential for being a big mess. And if you all don't think that there isn't a homeless po uh, population in downtown Aiken, you should be there at 7 o'clock in the morning when they're all still you know, sitting on the rockers on the, in the alley and the public works people are kicking them out. Well, they're just going to move right over uh, 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 to this new garage. So, um, I tend to think that um, a location outside of downtown would be the better choice for this project. But, uh, obviously, we don't know enough to say definitively. But uh, I, I, I would guess from looking at this group and listening to them that um, uh, I'd say it's, this, this, this group is three to one against uh, this project going forward. And while I was a city councilman and I used to chair public meetings like this, I would keep score. People would come up and they'd say they were for something or they'd be against something. And I had a cheat sheet, I just mark them off. I don't see anybody doing that. But, Is that good or bad? Well, it's bad, because you need, you need feedback. We're listening. We're, yeah, we're but, listening, we're writing things down. I remember, if you write, somebody's writing them down? Yes, sir. Right. Well, you know, that's important. Well, multiple comments, multiple comments. Same topic, multiple comments. Good. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, my name is Barry Bornstein. Um, I was born in Massachusetts. I lived in New Jersey and I worked in New York. So I have one message to bring to you to deliver to those that will be involved in any process any building. I feel like a brown shoe in a world of tuxedos because the knowledge I don't have of where you are going. The one word that I would bring to you, having lived, as I said, in New Jersey, worked in New York, and born in Massachusetts, is integrity. The process must have integrity. That's what we learned from the previous process. My grandmother taught me a word when I grew up, and that was chutzpah. That means, I think you know what it means. <laughs> and what I saw in the previous project was chutzpah. We need a new process, a process of integrity, a 
process that it's open, whatever the decision. I don't have the background or the knowledge to say that this building should be here or that building should be there, but I do believe that the people that will be making that decision have been open and have provided us with the integrity. So that's the one message. You didn't, as this woman said, I, based upon what you told us, and I understand your process, this is an opening. But if there's one word, and I'll repeat it again, that you need to bring back, to whether it's the city council, whether it's the employees, or anybody involved, that's integrity. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nikki Thompson. I grew up in Charlotte for 40 years and watched Charlotte go from not necessarily a small town, but an explosion that rivals downtown Atlanta. And if any of you have driven through Charlotte, especially in the last 10 years, you know that it looks nothing like it did 10 years ago, much less, you know, 40 plus years ago. Um, I currently split my time between Aiken and upstate New York. Um, you know, Ken says he's escaped from New York. I escaped Charlotte to go to New York. Now I divide my year. Um, but I follow very closely because, you know, a good possibility that when I'm ready to retire, my wife and I will be coming back So, And Aiken has been talking about a list of potentials. Charlotte certainly is not. Main reason being is because of all the things that the city of Charlotte did over, you know, the last 50 years that have turned it into what it is now, which is a downtown that has been, quote, revitalized my lifetime at least four different times. Three out of four failed miserably in multiple areas of downtown. The urban sprawl is out of control. It has been since the late 80s. You know, housing developments, cul-de-sac developments went up everywhere, strip malls went up everywhere, and easily 50% of those malls are now sitting vacant or have been torn down. And nobody wants to see that. So Barry made a very good point. Integrity is important. I can tell you from experience that most of what Charlotte went through had zero input at all from the residents, whether it was from Mecklenburg County or from the city of Charlotte residents. And currently Mecklenburg County is almost entirely the city of Charlotte. There's very little in Mecklenburg County that didn't get annexed by Charlotte. So something else to just keep in mind is when you want to preserve something, think about what preservation actually means and put some thought into that. Thank you. I think my name is Barbara. My name is Barbara Williams, and I grew up here, raised here, went away to school. And all that. And I think sometimes I live in Maryland. I lived in Rockford, Maryland for almost 40 years. And then I moved, retired, and I moved to Concord, North Carolina. I moved there for about 10 years. And I just, my sister and I just moved back here because I wanted to come back home. And it was mentioned some time ago that when my family has lived here for over 100 years. So we have roots here. This is home to us. It's not a temporary stop there. It's not a place where we just want people to come visit for a moment. Um, it's, I'm not from the equestrian family. This is home. And we really, at least I do, <laughs> want to preserve some of that. But I know change has to come. Anything that does not change will die. It just will die, no matter what. You know, I, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just, I just believe all of that. I wrote down a lot of roots, but they're all over the place. <laughs> I, I apologize. I didn't get here on time, so I didn't hear no, your presentation. Fine. But the comments that were made from both Horn and Ginsburg were valid, and I understand that. <coughs> um, but I am interested in economic growth, you know, from businesses for all for all of the city of Aiken residents, for everybody from all four continents. You know, how can the community really come together and make a contribution to the city, and also take advantage of what the city has to offer as well? Um, 
I really want Aiken to be an attraction and, and be active enough, for some, somebody, a young person that got called young, anyway, that we have to be active enough for people to want to not only stop food, but to live here. And I've talked to young people, both black and white, um, not necessarily Hispanic, but black and white, and some of the young people are saying, there's nothing for us to do, I'm leaving. So that's going to leave all of us here who die out here, or who don't die out here, <laughs> to stay here. And I just believe we really have to want to be around people of all ages. You know, that's where our compassion comes from. You know, just wanting to be around youth, wanting to be around, you know, young adults, wanting to be around seniors. I just believe there has to be something taken for all persons. The site location, I'm like someone else. I don't have much to say about where that goes. The hospital sounds like a great site. I work for the federal government. <laughs> And we as regulators did, did a lot of good things like regulating the lights and when you turn your light switch on, it comes on, you don't complain. So I work for all of that. You know, the federal government is a good place to work. And somebody mentioned that in terms of um, having the building filled with federal employees, but also having Aiken itself be active enough, attractive enough, positive enough, diverse enough for everybody to want to come down at some point in time during the day. Because most of us are not going to hang out. I'm just being honest. Not at night. <laughs> We're not. We're going to motivate it, and that's it. But we have to think broadly for everybody. You know, can a young person or a young couple with a stroll or walk downtown and get value out of that for their children? You know, can a senior you know, who's on a walker also, if they're living in a senior building, which I want to see more senior buildings in the city, they can be honest with you. Because it makes no sense to me for you to have a a 250 or 500,000 or 800 or million dollar home, and then you're saying, I still want that kind of luxury, but where is it? Is there a senior facility that gives me that kind of luxury? Do I dare leave to my children to come back to Aiken, which most of them don't want to, come back to Aiken to take care of me to stay in such a special place? I got a lot of things on my mind coming back, but I wanted to come back, and I want to make contributions while I'm back here. And, and be able to influence people for change, but making sure that change deals with living in Aiken, working in Aiken, and playing in Aiken. All of that is vital to me. Um, what else <laughs> Somebody talked about land use considerations. Here again, that's not, not my purview in terms of my knowledge, but I do think integrity is key, and someone mentioned that. Integrity, skills, and talents, and abilities to do things the right way. You know, get input, you know, from all of us, you know, not just from one part of town, but all parts of town. I just think that's important. I really do. Thank you very much. All right, y'all, we, we've kept you far too long. Thank you very much, everyone, for your enthusiasm, passion. Um, I will thank some of you, all of you, in advance for remaining open-minded, remaining vocal. We do want to have everyone continue to be engaged. We will post, uh, we'll assemble some notes from the conversation today. We've got them written down. Uh, we'll get them in better shape and we'll get them on the city's website. Um, and then the, um, I'm still working on getting this website, or excuse me, this email address uh, live, but we'll at least have a spot where y'all can at least send thoughts, comments, questions. Um, I promise in the future there will be far more answers to questions than just questions that we're listening to. So we'll work on that. We'll work on some other forms of public engagement. Surveys are a great idea. Perhaps some other groups that we can convene that um, we can get engaged and keep the process moving, but keep folks actively engaged and, and collectively informed. So thank you all very, very much. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all the next time. <laughs>